So our Alaska trip is going to be at the end of July and the 1st of August 2017. We are supposed to fly into Bettles, Alaska and get on a float plane and then we will fly on the float plane to Gadecki Lake and spend the next five days or so floating down the Alatna River. <clears throat> then we'll roll up our pack rafts and get out our backpacks and go up into the mountains, Aragach Mountains, for about four or five days. And then come back and get back in our rafts and float back down a couple more days to the next lake and have the float plane people pick us up. Today we're rafting the Hawassi as a training activity for the uh, Alatna, even though apparently the Hawassi is going to be a little bit more challenging than the allotment. So we're going to make it extra hard on the training activity. We went down the river yesterday and it was a good bit more exciting than I had anticipated. I guess I was thinking it would be more class one and maybe a couple of forays into class two, but it was quite a bit of class two and the, and the class two had some pretty nice drop-offs and rocks to wedge yourself on and fortunately nobody uh, actually got tipped over though if I'd been in my hard shell I probably would have. It's four miles of backpacking to start with with all of our gear on our on our back and if we could survive that and we get to the actual to the to the river then four or five days of the kayaking and then five or so days of backpacking into the Aragach and then uh, another three four days give or take of the of the kayaking. And when Keith says, go this way, I'm going to go that way. And when he says, go that way, I'm going to go that way. And when he says, we're going to camp over here, we're going to camp over there. So that's my plan, is to follow Keith, my fearless leader. My fantasy moment, watching that float plane fly away yeah. and knowing that I'm in the wilderness with no cell phone reception for 12 days. That's going to be pretty exciting. The first time being in the water will be really exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, and I think being when we uh, backpack up into the Aragach, I mean that's just going to be awesome, and being up there in the peaks because I've seen the pictures and they're fantastically gorgeous. If anything puts me in a ditch, it's going to be hypothermia because I am I am prone to get cold. Uh, so I've got to make sure that I'm well set up to handle a cold rainy day. That's the the one thing that I think could be my undoing. Other than that, I'm not concerned about the the kayaking or the, uh, certainly not the backpacking. I'm not concerned about grizzlies. I'll have plenty to eat. I'll have three other people there to eat if I'm really hungry. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not, I mean, three other people there whose food I can take from them if I really get hungry. I'm still nervous, even though we've practiced the pack rafts a few times. You just don't know. You're in the middle of nowhere. There's no help close by. If anything goes wrong, then it's just, <clears throat> you and the people that you're with trying to fix the problem. We're taking an engineer and an EMT, so hopefully that helps out if we have problems. And an English major. What? <laughs> <laughs> the logistics and planning for a trip like this are really complicated and challenging. You're talking about a mountain range that has no trails whatsoever, and the only way to get into it is either by flying or paddling or walking cross country. I've spent countless hours staring at this map, as you can see, planning out different routes and picking different locations that I thought might be interesting, and finally settled on a route that involved the Alatna River and the Aragach Peaks. Another thing we did was a lot of training for this trip. We had never been on a pack rafting trip before, and now we were jumping into one of the most remote places in the entire world. And so we needed to learn how to use the pack rafts. Uh, we needed to learn how to pack the gear into the pack rafts. We needed to learn how to help each other if we had any problems. And so we practiced all of that before we left. Another logistical challenge was packing both for backpacking and for pack rafting. For the backpacking portion, we needed to make sure that everything fit inside of our backpacks or on the outside and that we were able to carry it on our backs. For the pack rafting portion, we needed to make sure that 
things that needed to stay dry would stay dry and that meant using a lot of dry bags and keeping wet things separate from things that needed to stay dry. Another major logistical challenge we had was food planning and food preparation. Being just a little bit obsessive, I made a spreadsheet where I was able to put in which food we were going to take and then it would spit out how many calories I had for each meal. I planned every single meal for two people for the entire two weeks. And of course we spent plenty of time checking and double checking to make sure we had enough food and wouldn't go hungry before the end of the trip. After all that planning and preparation, eventually we hit the road. I want it to be documented that we are in the car, driving now, down the road. Where are we going? House. Where are you going? We're going to Nashville. That's all you know? <laughs> Ultimately, going Alaska. To Alaska. This is <laughs> Alaska. the beginning of the trip. Alaska? What? Actually, I already started the trip at my house an hour ago. You can tell it's not Alaska because it's like 100 degrees out there. I thought about that today, by the way, how excited I am to spend two horrible weeks of Alabama summer in Alaska. Yeah, that is the best part of the whole thing. Oh, it's not the best part of the whole thing, but it's certainly a bonus. It rains up here. The trip involved driving to Nashville and then taking a series of flights that ultimately landed us in Fairbanks, Alaska. From there, we took a small prop plane to Bettles, Alaska, because there is no road to take you to Bettles. Once to Bettles, we took an even smaller float plane that landed us at Gadecki Lake up on the Continental Divide. For the commercial flights, everything needed to be packed so that the airlines wouldn't destroy it. But once we got to Bettles, everything needed to be repacked so that we could carry it on our backs. This also included repacking half of our food into food caches. You can see the gray hair you just can't really tell. You care if I stick yours in there first? I got another fuel canister. I'll put it in my pack. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So one will kill. Where can you can just uh, put your stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Eventually the plane arrived, the logistics were done, and all we had left to do was get lost in the wilderness. Hey Lane, what's going to be your happiest moment so far, Ready? <laughs> what's, what's about to happen?
that feeling of being left alone in such a remote, isolated, and unforgiving wilderness is simply indescribable. It is incredible. You want me to read to you? No. I want you to make the rain stop. Out of my control. Let me do this. Oh, oh, yeah, that's that, the that, audience. That didn't help. <laughs> what you getting ready to do, Lane? It's about time to do some kayaking. You looking forward to it? I gotta say, I'm pretty excited about doing some kayaking. <laughs> after all, especially after the four and a half miles of slogging through the tundra, this is, uh, it's high time. It's gonna be a walk in the park. Oh, it's gonna be a walk in the park. It's going to be different. It's going to be different, though. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> we'll just wait here, then, shall we? <laughs> hey, there's a rock right there! <laughs> huh? um. <laughs> Now you need to cheer too. Good morning. This is Tuesday, July 25th. It's 8:25 in the morning. Um, we've been at this since Saturday after late Saturday afternoon. So Saturday evening. Saturday. Oh, we didn't talk about how bad that hike was. Oh, yeah. yeah. The four about, miles that yeah. took us how many days? Well, it took about. Five and a half hours, probably all together. Four miles. Yeah. Through it was over three days. <laughs> bogs and yeah, tell so the bogs. It was just slow and wet, or very slow, very wet, extremely Spongy. cold. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know if you were gonna if your foot was gonna sink, if it was gonna be on top of whatever you were stepping on, or if you were gonna sink six or eight inches. And there might be water at the bottom of that and there might not so it was incredibly slow going especially with all the gear yeah our packs were at the heaviest yeah very precarious for ankles yeah. yes uh what else so then the we get into camp on saturday night how'd the weather go wind rain more wind, wind more rain the wind kept kicking up higher and higher by the time we finally put our tent up and climbed in there laid down our heads, it got kicked into overdrive. <laughs> From the other direction. Yeah, so, so then our tent kind of collapsed on us and then we had to get out and kind of figure out a way to get the tent to stay up. So he finally figured out to tie the lanes pack, backpack, so that helped. And we endured the night. And then day two dawned with high wind warning. Yep, 30, high wind 30. warnings. Um, day two was just, <laughs> <laughs> More of the same. Rain and rain and rain. Sometimes rain just like downpours of rain with wind, and it was pinging off the tent so much. He was wondering if it was ice or hail or something. So, so we covered what about two, two and a half miles on day two, and then said, "Hey, this is a good campsite." And it was a good campsite. Because we weren't going to be able to paddle in that anyway, because the the wind was coming from downriver. So it was just yeah. So we snuggled in and slept a lot. And then got into camp yesterday, and what kind of weather did you have then? We finally saw the sun. <laughs> Tracy, how was your reaction to seeing the sun? Um, I cried when I saw the sun because <laughs> I didn't think we were going to see it at all on this trip. I was scared that we were all going to die of hypothermia. So. We finally started paddling About yesterday one. afternoon. Yeah. About one. First, it rain. was more like trail running in a river, <laughs> and then it became uh, then it became actual paddling. I would say class one, class two stuff. And why are you? What do you mean by trail running? Uh, we were having to get out and drag our uh, drag our boats because the water was low. Very frequently. Yeah, yeah. You paddle like 50 yards and then drag for 25. So, so. about the cold then? Did it have any effect on you? 
No, other than freezing my feet, it was not a problem at all. <laughs> it was really bad cold when we were having to get out constantly. Yeah. But once we were able to paddle for several hundred yards at a stretch, uh, I started staying pretty warm, even with neoprene. And we kind of got to a point to where we were going for several a mile or two, I think, yeah. without having to get out. Yeah, eventually it got the river got big enough and was confined to a small enough channel to where it was good. You see any animals yesterday? I saw two bears, yes. And not not like y'all saw two bears. <laughs> well, Mark, tell me about your bear experience. So we saw Tracy pulled over to the side of the river. Keith said bear, and I started looking for it. And we got up there to her, and we started watching that one. Then we saw another one. Um, you were saying, what, half a mile away or so? They were close enough to where we could tell they were grizzly bears. but. Um, and then they both started running down toward the river, toward where Lane was. One of them, <laughs> Oblivious to the... <laughs> yeah. I had, I had yeah, kayaked out ahead and had realized everybody was behind me. So I'd stopped and I'm just sitting there waiting, trying to keep warm. Bear snack. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to see the bears actually run down through the meadows. And one of them looped back up around. It was acting all crazy. It was really cool to see that. Um, this morning started off great. We... Uh, Heard a wolf howl twice. I was already out of my tent. It sounded like it was across the river. And a few minutes later, I heard a uh, rock fall up on the slope there. Turned around to look, see what it was. And uh, there was a big black wolf going diagonal up the, the little slope. And it turned back and then went straight up and over the lip. Um, it's pretty awesome. The thing is huge. How far away was so, it? I have probably 300 yards maybe. Yeah. Something like that. That's your first wolf? That was my first wolf ever. So I was thrilled. I was happy just to hear it. That was one of my big things. I wanted to hear a wolf howl while I was out here. So I got to hear one howl twice and see it. So I'm thrilled with that. So to protect the campsite at night, we've got a little tripwire system that sets off an alarm when somebody hits it. It's almost I mean, when a, a bear hits it. When anything hits it. And what's been hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, you need to come over here too. Because <laughs> I've hit it twice, Keith has hit it once. So what happens the second, the third time you hit it? <laughs> the third time Keith hits it or I hit it, we get voted out of the perimeter. <laughs> no secure perimeter for you. <laughs> you're, you're, um, you'll come pee inside the even perimeter. Even if I'm outside the perimeter, I'll still wander through, <laughs> through the campsite and set off the alarm. You guys having fun so far? I'm having yeah. a blast. Yes. What is it pretty? Are you enjoying the views? This is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. floating through a valley with these beautiful mountains and the, the kayaking has been an absolute blast. It's uh, It was hard that first stretch, but once we got past that and got into some, yeah, into some good flow, yesterday. it was just awesome. Yeah, and what kind of flow level you've been, what class do you think the river's been at? It's probably been one, two so far. Think mostly one or mostly two or? mostly one with some, with some twos mixed yeah. in every now and then twos not too bad so, cool not too worried yet and these pack rafts really float well really stable and handle rocks and bumps and things a lot better than like a regular kayak would so Already.
having fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have trails. trails. Is, that, is that what that's called? <laughs> More of a trail than what we've been on. <laughs> What's that river? After two weeks of rain and wind and trellis tussocks and flipping boats and dangerous rapids and grizzly bears and wolves and just absolutely glorious paddling and hiking, the trip had finally wound down and it was time to head home. A few park rangers had been delayed by a few days by bad weather, so they got a ride out before we did. But as unrelenting and unforgiving as this difficult wilderness could be, I didn't want to go home. This place was beautiful. The solitude was perfect, and I wanted to stay here as long as I possibly could. But responsibilities waited back in the other world, and I had no choice. I had to get on that plane, and I had to head back.
was a bit of a culture shock coming back to a world with people, but there was also hot food and a bed, and the Brooks Range would be there until next time. Thank you.